After routine use of uh, high quality surgery and uh, preoperative radiotherapy or chemo radiotherapy, distant metastasis represent the main cause of treatment failure and death. Also, adjuvant chemotherapy is an established treatment for stage 2 and especially stage 3 colon cancer patients. A Cochrane meta-analysis was published a few years ago showing that use of adjuvant chemotherapy improved disease-free survival and overall survival of patients with rectal cancer. However, this meta-analysis included patients who were not treated with preoperative radiotherapy or chemoradiotherapy and had suboptimal quality surgery. There are now four randomized phase three trials which compared observations versus adjuvant chemotherapy in patients who had been previously treated with radiotherapy or chemoradiotherapy. And actually none of these trials showed a statistically significant survival advantage for adjuvant chemotherapy. More recently, these trials were um, analyzed within the context of a meta-analysis and again, these meta-analyses failed to show any survival advantage from adjuvant chemotherapy for patients with pathological stage 2 and 3 disease. Recently, results from uh, randomized phase 2 studies have been published. This study was conducted in Korea. It was a study comparing uh, single-agent fluoroparamidine-based therapy versus oxaliplatin-based chemotherapy in patients who had been previously treated with preoperative chemoradiotherapy. And this study appears to suggest that uh, oxaliplatin-based chemotherapy may improve the survival outcome of uh, patients uh, with uh, rectal cancer, especially patients with uh, pathological stage 3 disease. A key point in the decision making for adjuvant chemotherapy in rectal cancer is how we should best select patients who could benefit from adjuvant chemotherapy. Should we use the clinical stage as indicated by MRI at baseline or should we use the pathological stage following preoperative radiotherapy or chemoradiotherapy? We know that MRI is the gold standard for rectal cancer staging, however its diagnostic accuracy, especially with regard to lymph node assessment, is still suboptimal. This means that there could be a high risk of overstaging or understaging. Therefore, I think that we should use a pathological stage to select our patients regarding adjuvant treatment. Considering the available evidence and the quality of the same, it's fair to propose observation only for patients who have achieved pathological complete response or have pathological stage 1 disease following preoperative radiotherapy or chemoradiotherapy. In pathological stage 2 and 3 disease, I think it's really important to discuss with patients the fact that there is no robust information to inform treatment decision and uh, it's important to discuss with patients uh, the pros and cons of uh, adjuvant chemotherapy versus observation. If patients are willing to receive adjuvant chemotherapy, single agent fluoroparamidine based treatment uh, should be considered for pathological stage 2 disease. Single agent fluoroparamidine or oxaliplatin based treatment could be considered for patients with pathological stage 3 disease bearing in mind the increased risk of toxicity, especially permanent peripheral sensory neuropathy with oxaliplatin-based treatment. We should uh, somehow change the way we uh, uh, design clinical trials in uh, the rectal cancer setting and uh, we should try and identify predictive biomarkers which can help us select the patients who could most benefit from adjuvant chemotherapy and in this regard there are already some ongoing trials based on the use of circulating tumor DNA for treatment selection.